at an isolated area of the community, enrolling pupils from four adjoining communities. A view from afar reveals a nice befitting classroom structure, but a closer look shows otherwise. School authorities say despite the condition of the school block, it is highly patronized by pupils, while it remains the preferred choice for most parents until the school feeding program, which was intended to boost enrollment, was suspended in May. Teachers say no explanation was given. When you don't have something, you don't think about it. But once you start something and then somewhere along the line it stops, it has a devastating effect. And so, yes, it has affected the children, especially those who were coming because of the food. Those of us who are teachers in the school, we are able to detect that this child is hungry. Like I told you earlier, when a child is playing with another, and you see that there's no real provocation, and yet you see the child crying so much, you just know that his hunger, is, I mean his anger is transferred from somewhere. And so you are able to detect that this child is sick. So you can part some small money for the child to go and buy food. And so the children are coping up with, even though it is not easy, but they are coping up so small. The situation is rapidly waning the interest of pupils who come to the school on an empty stomach and depend on food prepared and served in the school. For the teachers, this is impacting negatively on academic enrollment. For the class enrollment, for now, it is poor. Due to lack of food, the feeding grants is no more there. And as a community like this, it's hard for the kids to get to feed. So when they come and there is no food, the following day, they absent themselves. Therefore, bringing the number low. Sometimes when the children don't even come and you go to find out what is happening, that's what they'll tell you. Like in their language, It's not easy to get that they have not even had to eat. To talk of coming to school, they should come to school with empty stomach and do that. That's what they just tell you. And what will you say? If stomach is empty, you can't learn. You can't learn for the actual fact. I wish you people could be here up to 12 o'clock and see how it will be. The nursery and this one's all, they'll be lying like fowls. It's not easy. There has been a drastic reduction in enrollment of all the classes. In the school register, Class 1 has 41 pupils on enrollment, but only 12 had come to school during the mission team's visit. At Daliga, only committed pupils driven by passion to change society through education brace the odds to be in school. But even that, they cannot withstand the pressure induced by hunger. Concentration in class after 11 a.m usually becomes difficult as pupils who come to school on an empty stomach begin to react when the banks of hunger set in. Teachers will have to suspend lessons for some time. From 11 to 1 o'clock, it's always a hell for the teachers because that is the time the food they have eaten from the houses would have gone. And so, and they have nothing again to eat. And so from that time, they now struggle to end the day. And you know, the government has also said that we should close at three. So imagine from 11, the pe people start becoming hungry. Till three, <laughs> it's not easy. We are suffering here, we are suffering power here. It's not easy, I must be frank. And if you ask any of my uh, colleague teachers, they will tell you that it is not, when it gets to that time, they will have to now use all their tactics that they were taught in the training colleges to keep the children in class, if not, you have a, a disaster. The school feeding program in Daliga Primary School, described as one of the best government social intervention programs to aid retention of pupils in lower primary schools, was suspended in May this year. The kitchen is not in use and caterers not available. The air teacher Roger Aditok said the staff are compelled to feed the children. Because of the, the stoppage of uh, the school feeding, if, if a teacher finds out that this child is hungry and has two CDs or one CD, he passes and the child eats. So that child thinks that, oh, I have a second parent in school. 
Our head is always trying, and we the teachers, what we bring from the house, you just decide to squeeze, give everybody small, small, just to put and drink water. And with that encouragement, the following day they will come, because sitting in the house, of, it's hard to get and eat. Mary Magdalene Wampakia is the education director of NAPDAM. I am very worried about that because uh, the school feeding was able to get so many children in school and we would have wished that uh, that is uh, uh, sustained. sustained so that uh, our children will have education. An attempt to seek answers from the school feeding coordinator was unsuccessful. The Minister for Finance and Economic Planning, Ken Uforiata, had indicated in the 2023 budget the allocation of 138 million cities as funding for the school feeding program. For teachers and pupils of Daliga, they are hopeful that the expression in the budget will translate into the program being restored to achieve its objective. But that is not the only problem facing the Daliga Primary School. The infrastructure accommodating staff and pupils have deteriorated over years, posing danger to pupils. Windows and doors have dislodged from their positions, while cement chalk boards in some classes are broken, compelling academic work to be done at a slow pace. The head teacher believes that the school has the potential to impact lives of more rural children when given the necessary attention by stakeholders in education. We are grateful to the district assembly to the Member of Parliament, uh, Dr. Market Nawani, for supporting us with furniture and some other support. But we are, our doors are still open. You can see, if we get a, an environment that is attractive, this school is a very nice school, it's situated at a very nice environment, no noise, n nothing. And so learning and teaching will be very effective if the school is attractive. Academically, empowering pupils of the Daliga Primary School to change society will require the commitment of efforts and resources by stakeholders to address the immediate challenges affecting enrollment and infrastructure in the community.